Hello my garden friends, this is Jersey Shore Lisa from MyNJGarden.com and I'm in my front yard food forest in Ocean County, New Jersey, zone 7A, 6B, we're kind of on the cusp. And I'm going to show you this garden bed in the food forest. This is a fruit tree guild with a few plants that I'd like to tell you about. Um, now I did a video in this bed in the fall last year because this bed had sunchokes in it, which are Jerusalem artichokes. They're in the sunflower family, they're perennial, and they come up very tall. Um, by the end of the season, when they bloom in the fall, they're probably about eight to 10 feet tall by the time they bloom, and they were coming up in this section. But I do have a problem year after year with voles, um, which are little critters that bear, tunnel underground and they like to eat the tasty tubers of the sunchokes. Now sunchokes are perennial and they are very persistent. So they come back every year. Even if a tiny speck of the root is left underground, you can get a whole nother sunchoke plant by the next year. But those voles, they just love them. So they really decimated it. And, and sunchokes tend to spread pretty vigorously through the garden. But <clears throat> the, the voles uh, took a lot of them so that uh, the patch became very thin. So you can see that they are coming back in spots. That's a little patch of sunchokes. That's a little patch of sunchokes. And what I did in the fall was I planted garlic all through the bed as well. I have had garlic elsewhere in the yard. Voles don't tend to bother with the garlic. So rather than try to poison the voles or do something else to keep them out of the bed, I planted all this garlic to kind of confuse them a little bit um, and make it so that this patch isn't just a tasty buffet for voles. <laughs> so maybe with all this garlic around, they'll leave these sunchokes alone. I won't be harvesting them this year. And you can see a couple of sunchokes coming up in the middle of the garlic patch. Um, and and they'll get to reestablish this space. I really would love to have successful sunchokes here. So um, the, the garlic should be harvested around the 4th of July. I might pull a few of these heads of garlic, but I'll probably leave quite a few to try and keep the voles out of the space. Uh, and then, so th you can also see a couple of low shrubs amid this patch and those low shrubs are actually native to this property and this area they're low bush cranberries uh wild cranberries so the berries are just forming now um it did bloom so you might be able to see a couple of the berries just getting started to swell they don't there there are a couple right there they don't get really big on these low bushes and the wildlife tends to get them before I do, but because they're productive and they are native and I didn't plant them, they just came up along the edges of this new construction property that we uh, moved into in 2000, late 2015. Um, I'm leaving them and I'm letting nature do its thing here. And uh, I think it's fantastic that they've decided to repopulate the area. So I leave them alone. Um, Against the fence, I've planted uh, a seedless grape. This is a blue seedless grape. And um, that I've, I've given a couple of trellises to the front of the fence so that it has a place to wind up and, um, and establish itself. I also have crawling amongst this bed. Um, this is called Stachys. It's a ground mint. And I believe it's also called Florida botany, or that's very closely related, but it's a Chinese artichoke. That's what it's also called. And it gives you these little tubers under the ground that look kind of like grubs. They're probably about the size of your index finger when they're real happy. And it tends to spread um, and they are edible and you can eat them raw or you can cook them. Um, and they're supposed to be pretty tasty. 
I haven't really tasted them yet, um, but I do let them spread throughout this bed and uh, then they tend to bloom in summer, same time the other mints do. This is a ground mint. So it kind of runs around and creates a ground cover. But again, I'm not sure if the voles like it or not but it's not a really thick ground cover and I think the voles have something to do with that. Um, so uh, those are things in this bed. I also have here a gooseberry and this gooseberry is so happy. Now at my other property, um, I, have a goose I had a gooseberry too and this is actually a piece of that gooseberry plant that I moved here. Now that gooseberry was in a heavily shaded area of the property and it fruited very well but it was it spread in a much more sparse way it wasn't such a full shrub as this one but boy uh, th this one is super happy and it's the first thing to fruit in the food forest every year look it's just covered with beautiful gooseberries these are going to get bigger and they're going to turn reddish but you'll still see green in there before they're ripe. When they're ripe, they kind of turn reddish. They're a little translucent and the chipmunks love them when they're ripe. So, but there's plenty for me to get too. So, um, this is a great shrub to have. The gooseberries are kind of sweet and kind of tart at the same time and they make a delicious jam, but they're also really great when you eat them fresh. So it is a productive shrub in both sun and shade, but it becomes really full and happy in the sun. Um, this is a pawpaw tree. It's one of three in the food forest that I have. Um, so it does have pollinators close by. This is the first year that this one flowered, um, but it's a different, one of the other three is really setting fruit for the first time in a major way. This one, there might be one or two young fruits that are developing on this tree. I'm not really confident that they'll make it to harvest on this tree because it is the first year it flowered, um, but it's, it's really coming into its own. It's, it's getting some height on there. This is probably about 10, 12 feet high at this point. Um, and it can be up to about a 25, 30 foot tree uh, when it's mature. So pawpaws are the largest native fruit to North America and they are related to bananas and they taste supposedly I haven't eaten one yet they supposedly taste like banana custard or a vanilla e banana custard I'm I'm looking forward to having my first pawpaw um this is a perennial this is solidago it's also called goldenrod and it's native to uh this area of the United States the northeast and it's loved by pollinators and it blooms late with the asters. It's, it's a fall blooming perennial. Uh, there's an iris that's tucked in here, not on purpose. It was in my compost and it decided that that was a good spot to come up. Um, these two pots over here, I actually, pawpaws tend to sucker and they wanna form thickets and colonies of pawpaw trees, but I really just want three pawpaws. There's one right there. There's one right there, which is much smaller because it got damaged when I transplanted it from my other yard, but it came back. It's coming back strong. And then um, that one right there. So those are my 30 pawpaws. Whenever suckers come up, I kind of pull them up and I give them a try to pot them and see if I can get them to survive. Now, potting up pawpaw suckers is not easy. They tend to die. Um, and out of the four or five that I tried last year, it looks like this one might make it. It looks like that one is really trying to reestablish, not from the main uh, sucker that I planted, but the roots must still be alive and kicking under there and they're sending up um, new branches. Uh, so that's basically what we have in this bed. Um, this is, I, I think this is just a weedy tree. It might be a black cherry uh, that's coming up out of the wood chips. But um, that's what we have. This bed here uh, is terraced 
on this side. I'm standing in my neighbor's yard right now, um, but it's terraced so that I don't lose the mulch and the nutrition that's layered on top of our very sandy soil. I, I built these beds using sheet mulch uh, before I planted. So um, there's lots of organic matter involved. It keeps the nutrition there. It keeps the um, the moisture in that those areas to keep these plants happy and healthy. So this is the oh oh and then so this is another section of the bed the, of the food forest that is is connected to Bunny Run. Bunnies come through here. Thankfully, the bunnies don't tend to bother with the tops of the plants involved in that bed, though they did browse on some of the garlic uh, early in the spring when it started to come up. You can see here some, they, they munched on some of the leaves, but the garlic has outrun the bunnies. So they, I guess they don't tend to bother with it once it's become more mature. Um, but the bunnies do love Egyptian walking onions. So I have some of them in this container right here. These are perennial bunching onions. And you can see that as they grow, they send this wacky thing up from the bot the base of the plant it travels up to the top and then they'll form um, a collection of bulbits here those bulbits become a big bunch real heavy and then they fall to the ground root themselves and grow again so that's what they kind of walk around your property and spread themselves you don't have to plant them um, that would work very well and I have planted them in this bed. Um, there are a few very small ones coming up, but the bunnies, they can't outrun the bunnies. The bunnies love the Egyptian walking onions. So basically I have them in a few pots around the yard, but it does not, the Egyptian walking onions have, have no chance against bunny pressure. <laughs> the bunnies love them. So um, that's what's in this bed, uh, this fruit tree guild includes the pawpaw and the sunchokes and the stachys and the um the gooseberry and the garlic let me know if you have any questions uh, i look forward to your comments and please subscribe to the channel and like the video and uh i'll see you again very soon thanks for joining me Bye bye